Jesus Christ. All right. Um, I'm at the point on this night scoop video where it's um, clear and it needs fresh subbing. So I thought maybe this would be a good point to just kind of go through, record what I'm doing, show you a few tips. I don't know if anybody is actually interested in this or if this is useful, but uh, well, here it is anyway. So um, quickly before I actually do anything, if you go into the options, um, there are a couple things that I've set that I think everyone should have. You don't have to use the exact keys that I use, obviously, but it would be good if you had shortcuts for, for these kinds of things, especially. Um, so first of all, under always, which is just, you know, which part of the interface the, the key is active during, um, it's good to have both, uh, I call it insert and control insert. That's what I've bound them to. But basically what this does is um, by default in Aegis Sub, the only way to make a new line um, just with a keyboard key is by pressing enter. And that places a new line at the end of your previous line that you have highlighted, which is great. Um, that's useful a lot of the time, but what that doesn't help with is if say you've got a gap where there are no lines to be sub, to be typeset, and you wanna put a line in there, or maybe you wanna put a line on top of another line, rather than placing a line in and then dragging the in and out points around until you have them where you want them. Often working with variety content like this, where it's not just straightforward speaker, 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 um, like you would have in anime or something, it's a lot of overlap. Um, it's good to be able to drop the start of a new line where your video playhead is, okay? So I highly recommend going into your preferences just like I have here and setting up whatever key you want. I've put insert um, under always for subtitle insert after video time. And obviously the way you do that, you just click new, you push your shortcut here. And then in this bit, you push edit, fuck's sake command name well how do i let me put a command name there it is double click and you do subtitle and then it gives you all the options underneath the subtitle heading um we've got subtitle insert after video time and that'll give you exactly like what i've got here also useful um i've put it on the same key just because that's where my brain goes is um the edit line split before so say you have a line that's going and um either after getting it back from a translator and the English text is just too long for the length you've given it, or it's just a time where it's convenient to set in and out points and then cut it in half later. Um, say for example, you want to use transparency to hide the second half of a line, often to match hard subs, and then reveal that second half after. You might just want to be able to set the start and end of your line, fill the subtitle stuff in, and then cut it in half, but leaving the text the same, okay? So the way that you do that is with this shortcut, edit line split before. These might have defaults. I don't know, maybe they found them. Maybe you can get them by going in through the context menus, but having it on the keyboard is awesome. So this also should be something you should set, edit line split before. Again, you can use my control insert binding. You could do your own, that's fine. The other shortcut that I use um, very, very frequently, let's just see where they are. Um, are going to be the video frame previous. Looks like I got them under audio. So let's go under audio here. Video frame previous and video frame next. So I have these set to Q and E because this is just how I, this is a follow over from like Premiere and other editing that I do. Um, I like to have them on my left hand without having to move it. So Q, E, frame back, frame forward. And there's a, half the stuff you do here is going to be jumping around trying to find the exact point at which something shows up or disappears on screen or where a cut is and being able to rapidly frame step is awesome i think the defaults are probably arrow keys or maybe alt arrow keys that's what they are on most stuff i don't like that because then you have to take your hand off the mouse and jump back and forth for this action that you're doing very very frequently so if you're comfortable with left and right arrow or whatever, maybe you have buttons on your mouse you want to set these to, but it's good to at least get familiar with, if not make your own bindings for frame back and frame forward. In Aegis Sub, this is video frame next, and where's my cue? Video frame previous. Okay, again, you can use my bindings, you cannot, absolutely up to you. Um, the other ones, and I know these are gonna be under the subtitle edit box maybe? No, they're gonna be under, um, under audio, almost certainly. Here we go, X 
and Z. Um, this is another carryover from working in Premiere and other NLEs. Um, by default, usually the in point is I and the o po out point is O, which makes sense because I is in and O is out. Um, but again, that means taking your right hand off your mouse or moving your left hand over and finding those and looking down and doing it. I don't I don't care for it. The best is to have it somewhere, again, you can access it quickly with your left hand. On that same cluster, in that same vein as Q and E, I use Z and X because I can find them just with my, um, with my two fingers here and I don't have to look. So I've got it set so time, snap, start video will drop the in point of your current subtitle line to the video head and the X will drop the out point to the playhead. So you can you can find exactly visually where, for example, a hard sub shows up on screen. You can hit Z or whatever your set in marker option is to set it at the start um, and then X for the end as well. That's, I think, all the important stuff. There might be some more um, that I'm forgetting, but those are definitely the really common ones that I think that if you don't have, you're gonna be kicking yourself. So with all that in mind, once you've got your keys and everything set, um, this next bit is unsubbed, as you can see down here. Um, you guys did all the stuff up here, thank you very much. Um, but I figured it made sense to wait until a fresh one to try to do something like this because uh, I haven't seen what's coming up except just this first Konnichiwa line here. So hopefully we'll run into examples of different things and I can show you um, just kind of, I guess, the workflow for this. Um, keep in mind, I'm not an authority. I'm making this all up as I go along too, but uh, I like to think I'm decent enough at it. So hopefully this is useful to somebody. So um, we've got a gap between our previous line that ends here and this one. So let's just find out where we should start this line. Now I'm middle click dragging in my audio here to drag the playhead around. So. Unlike with anime, where you can do all of this just off the waveform, we kind of have to use the video because so often we're lying onto like hard subs and stuff. So I'm just gonna drag back and forth and you can see where the waveform is. There's audio here. So let's just play a little bit of this and see what it looks like. Konnichiwa. Okay, simple enough. So obviously the inclination is to drop a, a subtitle right at where the audio starts, right? So if you remember the shortcuts earlier, this is now where this is going to come in handy. If we just press enter, our subtitle now starts here, new subtitle. Our subtitle now starts <laughs> at the end of the previous one and not on the new one. Okay, that's not very useful or fast. So what we'll do, I'm going to put this right at the front of the audio here and I'm going to hit insert. And you can see there, there's the start, there's the end that it puts whatever duration by default. Our subtitle now starts where our playhead was. So, konnichiwa, put whatever. So let's look at that. Konnichiwa. <laughs> cool. So um, obviously you want to end the subtitle where the audio ends, right? So we'll put there. So this is now a line that starts when the audio starts, ends when the audio ends, exactly. Let's see if that works. Konnichiwa. Okay, there's at least one really obvious problem with this. And that is, if you look, how the hell do I zoom this thing? It's control, sorry, it's alt and the other software that I use. Um, these look like they're um, gonna be, what are these, 10 millisecond markers? Eight, three, nine, two. Yeah, so this magenta line uh, indicates in an H.264 codec, where enough of a change has happened visually in the scene that it wants to store a new frame to reference off of for the rest of them. What it means basically is that if you see that purple line, it's likely that there is a scene change. So I'll go back here, I'm gonna use my step back and forward keys, which you've already set, and we'll step, and you can see there. That's actually correct in this case. It isn't always infallible, but here it's good. So that is where the scene changes. So between the camera cutting and the start of our line, it looks like we have what? Actually, I can look down here. Um, this number here, oh look, time of this frame relative to the start and end of current subs. We are 142 milliseconds in front of the um, end point of this current line. So what that means is when you're playing this back at full speed, you get nothing for a very brief amount of time and then the subtitle shows up, which is so short 
that it just looks flashing. I mean, if you're not looking for it, it's acceptable, I guess, but best practice really is to just go ahead and set the start of that line to start on the, on the um, scene change. So I've shift clicked because left click sets the endpoint. So I've shift clicked to that, that will snap it to that keyframe. Now that's not always accurate because we are working with 60 frame per second video. Aegisub does not like it. There's something with the math that it does that over the course of um, any given video, it's gonna drift in and out or it either will be correctly where you're placing it with the video or it will mismatch by just enough that that point will be before or after a little bit. But in this case, it's good. So if I step forwards, our Konnichiwa Apiri, our Konnichiwa Apiris, our Konnichiwa appears after the cut, which is what we want, which now looks like this. It's just, it's just a little bit smoother. Now, as far as where to cut this off, we know that when this is translated to English, it's going to go, hello, or maybe, excuse me, neither of those take a ton of time to read. So it's probably fine to end the line with the audio. I usually give it a little bit extra. It just feels better to me. And in this case, again, it could go either way, but I tend to leave things on screen longer than they need to be just to give as much time as possible for someone to read it and for their minds to be able to erase the fact that they're looking at subtitles. Um, so that's pretty good. I'll just untranslate that. We've got our first line now. Let's move on. There's a soft high. Let's put it in. I mean, we don't necessarily need it, but I mean, fuck it. I'd rather typeset more and have less translator later or throw it out at some other point because it takes no time. So um, I'll move the playhead to where I want the line to start, which is within a couple you know, milliseconds of the beginning of the frame. Within a couple hundred milliseconds, I should say, we'll press insert so our line shows up right there. Um, and I'll just put in high. And I'll end it on the fly um, just by pressing my out key as it's playing. It's kind of long, but it doesn't feel bad. Um, I'm happy to leave it long for now. And we can always go back and trim all this once it gets translated. Okay, so uh, konnichiwa. Don't do ah uh, and konnichiwa separately. Um, it's good. The, uh, uh, lasts for what? One, two, three, like 300 milliseconds. It's going to just be stroboscopic. It's not going to be readable. So let's put right at the start of the ah. Uh, and look, I can do this just looking at the waveform here. Um, I don't need to actually like listen it over and over because it's pretty clear when it starts. Insert ah. Uh, text, 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 text. It doesn't actually matter what you write. I try to put the first phoneme in, um, especially when lots of stuff starts to overlap just so that the translator can find out which line it is I'm referring to. Um, we'll do a lot of that later too with this detective stuff too, which actually, that's right, oops. Hi is not said by the detective, so I'm gonna set it back to stock. Okay, um, I will end this here with my out. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of ending his line here and then making her line here like this, so actually ending it and starting with the audio, because then there's that bit where it blinks, I'm just going to end his line and, and butt it right up against the start of hers. Just feel smoother to me. Because every time text appears and disappears, it, I don't know, it does something that shakes your brain. Um, and those are so close that I'd rather just do that. There's this text fading up. Let's get everything else first and come back to that. It's better to work in layers than confuse yourself with start and stop times all on top. So. They kind of overlap there, so we have a couple options. We could We could end hers there where he says domo. 
in the car. Hello. I'm just gonna do that for a moment here for the sake of checking. No more. So that looks like this. Oh, no more. Which is fine, but again, I just feel like this is a bit fast, this Konnichiwa line. No more. And they do overlap in the audio. So let's make the subs overlap as well. So we'll take this Domo line. He starts another line here anyway, right? So I'll put my playhead here. Or he's just about to go Tante Nanto Scoop. And then we'll take her Konnichiwa line and I'll shift right click to drag the out point of it. And I'm gonna drag it so that her out point matches his there. And now hers will show up on top of his, like this. It could have been done the other way. You could make an argument for either. This is just my inclination. Um, and again, in every situation, it's not necessarily always the way to go. But that's where my heart leads me. And then we have another line from him. It butts up against the end of that other line, that domo line. So let's just press enter with the last one. It's important to I set page up and page down to move up and down in the subtitle grid. Um, if I press enter while Konichiwa is selected, it's going to make a new line that ends with that. I don't want that. I want my new line to start at the very end of domo. that last line, domo. So enter with that selected like that. And now I have a new line here. Oh, Context, text, 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 text. Like I said, I just try to get that first phoneme in there. And then I'll end this here and we'll lead his next line right into that. Son, text, text, text. There's a cut here. Um, I'm gonna end his line on that scene change because again, that's probably about where it actually ends, but what is that, two, three hundred milliseconds? <laughs> Feels better just to end it on the cut. <laughs> let's go, oh my god, it's control to zoom. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So let's go back to where we started this and just look at what we've got so far. <laughs> I'm trying to decide if I... Oh, See, even even it disappearing for that long is like bugging me. I don't know if I should merge those two. Oh, it's fine. Oh, she has another little high in there too. Probably not necessary, but let's do it anyway. So what I'll do is I'll move my playhead to where I want it to start. Like I said, her high is here. Again, that's a middle click to move the video playhead. Um, now what I'll do is I will go, and if I if I don't do this next thing, the new line I'm about to put in will be all scattered in the rest of it. So you notice that there's a line in, oh, use my mouse to point, derp. Um, there's a line in the subtitle edit box here that's highlighted in this kind of pale piss color. That's the line that's on screen right now. So I need to make sure that line is selected before I insert the new one so that they appear close to each other and we're not scattering these all over the place. So I'll do insert with that highlighted and this is her hi. It doesn't need to stay up for that long. Let's see, I'll end it about here and we'll see what that looks like. That feels pretty good. And it kind of matches with her going and if you end or start something when a noise happens or when like a camera move happens, I don't know why, but again, it just, it, it feels like a cleaner uh, transition. Okay, uh, let's worry about this red text now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my middle click drag to drag the playhead to about where it starts. And then I'm going to use my frame back and forward to find the first frame where the text shows up. So there's no text, there's no text, there's no text. There's the first frame. You can see anything at all, okay? That faint bit of text. I'm gonna now move my selection in the grid down here. I can either click on it or I can use a hotkey. Again, this is so that they show up close to each other. I'm gonna do insert to make a new line for there. 
and I'm going to type in um, red text. Let's let it play for a little bit. I'm going to drag these. I want to drag that one. I've never found a good way to... See, it always goes for that. What I can do then is just pick this and double click it to move it. So, oh my god, I did it again. It's because I have the other one selected. My bad. Absolutely my bad. Fuck you. Red text. This is fucking ridiculous. With red text selected, I can click this, I can double click, and it will set the origin for the text where I have the cursor. Jesus Christ. Um, notice there are two lines here. There's a smaller one, which is probably her name, a title, housewife? I don't know. Yeah, so this must be her name. So that must be like, you know, housewife or, or client or whatever. So we'll make two. So without worrying about coloring it right now, let's just get the in and out point set. So I've got an in point set exactly where it first starts to show up. No more. Let's find the end of the red. So again, the very last frame it shows up, we'll hit our out button. Now we need to make this fade. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make this red just to like make this visually a bit easier. So if you select um, at the beginning of the actual text block, click this, you'll set your primary fill. Then take your dropper and pick um, the color. In this case, it's kind of not necessarily white, but kind of gray. Click that little box and that sets that. We will set the outline color, which is this. Click here, find the outline, eyedropper it. We've now got the same outline just for the sake of making this um, show up. So we need to make this fade because it fades on and it fades off. Um, so the way we do this is go to the beginning. Now, just like earlier, you need to frame step forwards until the first frame where it's fully opaque, roughly, which to my eye is about here, okay? Now within the curly braces at the start, or you can make a new set of curly braces. It depends on how you want to do it. Um, I like to keep it in here. You do, what is that, a backslash or a forward slash? It's not the one you would use in like a URL. It's the one you would use in like a Windows file dialog. Um, that slash. Fade has to be in lowercase. Left parentheses, zero comma zero, right parentheses. So what we've just done is we've set a fade zero duration at the start, zero duration at the end. Obviously it's not actually zero duration. The start duration is going to be the difference between when the line appears and when the hard sub is fully opaque. Now we've just moved the playhead to the point where it's fully opaque. And if you look at these numbers here, this is the time since the start of the line, plus 310 milliseconds. So all you need to do now is instead of a zero here, that first value needs to be 310 milliseconds. What that tells it, it's from the start of the line until 300 milliseconds into the line, it will fade. And it should match it really, quote, really closely, closely enough that we'll call it perfect. Same thing at the end. Find the last frame in which it's fully opaque. Here, look at this second value. 86, I guess it's only 86 milliseconds. Let's try that. 86, it must fade out really fast. Yep, sure enough, that's what it looks like. Perfect. So we've timed one line to match the fade. Rather than do all that again for this tiny second text, let's do this. Right click on your line that you've already timed out, hit duplicate. We're gonna move it over. And we're gonna just call this small text. And it's really big. So um, what you can do is within your curly braces again, do the backslash forward slash, whichever slash FS, which is font size, and just start putting numbers in. Put it there for now. And we'll kind of center it up on this. This is all gonna change when you, um, when you go in and have the English because nothing will match. But this at least visually gets it there. So I don't know, it's kind of obvious to everyone and you've got kind of a closer to final product. So. I don't feel like that second little high from her is gonna make it in the end. It feels kind of fast, but we'll leave it for now. Okay, let's get the next line. We'll select our last line here. She starts pretty close to the front. So we'll just hit enter and we'll start it there. Don't 
タクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタクスタ Like I, like I keep saying, it's, it's better to have it on for longer than not. This is the detective speaking. Text, text, text. And we'll end it. Again, this is shift right click to end at the same time as that other one. <laughs> and if it turns out later on,、um, when we get the English back, that it's too much to have them overlap like that, it's no problem to fix. We can just take her line here, shift right click, and set it to be the front, and then it will be. <laughs> Which might be plenty of time. I'll leave it like that, whatever. Again, the point is we can fix it later.、Um, <laughs> it's always a judgment call. <laughs> okay, actually, they are now both talking over top of each other, so it's probably better not to overlap them. Otherwise, we end up with two lines here and then changing to another two lines. <clears throat> Which might get confusing. So <laughs> let's do the detective's line here. Text, 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 text. <laughs> we'll end his there. <laughs> yeah, she's right over top of him. I'm just going to so over top, I'm just going to duplicate his. Um, I'd rather him be on the bottom, so let's make his line appear first and then hers here. That way, Aegis Sub will choose to put his line on the bottom,、um, all other things being equal. Overlap. I'll end his hair. Yeah, okay, that's fine. And then over that,、mm, over his previous line, remember because his ends here. Yeah, enter just goes to the next one. So we're going to have to use insert. So there's probably a shortcut or way to do this, but I'm just going to go to the end of that. Insert this minor line, detective, text, text. <laughs> text, text. <laughs> Yeah, so because the hard subs are appearing here, it'd be better、um, because the audio works out that way. We'll end his just before the hard subs appear. Okay, so because that ends right there, I'll just enter to make a new line. Set this back to the stock, which is the default if we're not looking at like Matsumoto or the detective or someone else that we're doing something like this. This is gonna be big red text. No problems dragging this time because it's just the one line.、Um, if there's enough big red text, yeah, I'll go in and, and maybe consider making a,、um, a style just for it. What did I just set? That was the interior, that was supposed to be red.、Um, But it doesn't happen that often, and it's almost easier to not have to go through a million extra things in this list and just do it like this. I mean, this takes 10 seconds. Go in, set the outline, and we even have previously used colors here, so I can just pick, I think that's our gray from earlier. <laughs> Now, this has to stay on as long as the red does.、It、looks like we get a fade, so I'll set the end point to be the last frame in which we see it at all. I'll back it up to the last frame in which it's fully opaque. In before my curly braces, slash fade zero, and then my second number here, which is time until the end, is 85 milliseconds. Eight, five, just like that. <laughs> Great. Now we need to sub his line under that. <laughs> That's where his starts. <laughs>、um, insert. Detectives, oh, text, oops. I like to do it all caps because it's not usually done like that in the translation,、um, and that makes it really obvious the line hasn't been touched. Is that starting a little bit early? Yeah, it feels better.
Uh, we'll end that on the frame of the change there by shift right clicking. And I just, I'm gonna check again, cause it may not be quite on, but if I go back and forth across it, it does change on the same <laughs> He's already talking as soon as we come over. It's not the detective though. I think it's the, it's this other gentleman back here. So we need to make sure that when we put this line in, insert, I do not use the detective one. Um, BG man, text. Um, how to handle this? Let's see, I'm gonna listen again. So he kind of says the same thing twice. And she kind of says something and then that, I think that de is just the last part of a sentence. So I'm gonna simplify it. I'm gonna make her, I'm gonna make his line end where the detective starts going, ah. Uh. I'm just gonna duplicate that for her overlap. And then we're gonna put the detective after that. We'll see how it plays out after translation. If we do like ah, uh, hi, hi, ah, uh, and we split those out as different lines, I don't know if I want to make them all because. If I make them like ah, uh, and then the hi hi, and then the other one, so like what is it like ah like, uh, yes of course something, they'd be going so quickly oh, line hi, line hi. line. Oh. It almost be better to do a um a transparency and then a reveal. So keep ah uh, hi hi whatever as one line, hide the second part and then bring it up and reveal it. That way it's not so stroboscopic. I won't know what that's gonna look like until we get English. So let's just make it all one line for now. Hi hi oh ma yeah yeah. Yeah. Even all the way out to there. Yeah. And then if we want to split this up later, we'll split this up later. But for now, it's easier just to make it one line. Yeah. And I get like a yeah, yeah from the guy back there, I think. So that's at the end of that. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be a short line, so I think we're okay leaving it that short. Let's just see. It's, it's fast, we'll see when it's English. We can tweak it if it's too short. Again, you know me, I'm gonna end this on the scene change, because... Let's start this one there. <laughs> That's a tricky one to decide where to split it, isn't it? <laughs> There's enough of a change here. I think let's make these two lines. Why not? That's close enough. I'm, I'm, I tend to run these into the others. I know I'll, usually you would see them showing up and disappearing, even on professional stuff. Um, I was paying a lot of attention recently to the Netflix subtitle guidelines and actually how some of the shows um, work with subs because I always have subs on because I don't know, I guess I'm just ruined and I have to use them now, um, even for English stuff. But they are very much like the line is up when the audio is happening and the line is gone as soon as the audio isn't, even if it means it's very like on, off, on, off. I just like running them in. I don't know. I feel like it means I feel like it's smoother. I feel like it's better. So I'm gonna go with my heart on this one again. Let's put her line in. So she has two lines there, um, and then he overlaps her. So the way that I'm gonna handle this is because her first line runs right into her second line. I'm gonna sub both of hers and then I will go back into the detectives over top of that just to keep myself from getting confused. That's where her U line starts. So let's put that there. We'll put the next one against it with enter, U text text. 
And we'll end hers right where this detective starts. So now I'll put my playhead here where the detective starts. I'll go back to this one that's showing on screen right now. Insert detective text text interrupting. Starts pretty good. Let's figure out where to end it. I'll put it at the end by default. I know it feels like his line is on for a long time there, but there's, I mean, up, 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 down. That's a lot of changing, and if I end his too soon, see, it's just lots of up, down, up, down, up, down. I'd rather just keep it clean. Let's end his line with hers. So, her line, his line, her next line, his next line. We'll put his at the next one. There, detective, text, text. It's changing, so new text. <laughs> um, all right. Let's see how long we need to leave this up. I'm going to run it into his next line here. Again, because they're showing overlapping each other, I think I think it's good to give them some extra time. Her following him is great. And hers will end there too, so. Starts right there. Insert, so we start at the playhead. Stock. And I'll end hers with his. Insert a new one here, detective, text, text. Uh, where to split this? Um, I guess Kokoda is kind of like... She does a little half-hearted high in there. Um, we can't make that its own line. It's going to be too fast. So let's do this. Let's see what happens if we... Uh, this might be too quick too. I'm going to split his at the sono. Let's make his next one, some text. I try to leave the lines to be the actual line and, and if they pause for a little bit like that, not make a new one just because they paused. If it makes sense to split the line once it's English, we can split the line at the pause. Um, but it's easier to do that from one line than to deal with like 13 all stacked up. <laughs> Let's put her high right here. So we'll, we'll highlight the currently active line, insert, insert a new one, solo high. What happens if we end it at the change? Feels quick. I know it's just going to be like a yes or okay, but that's too long. Let's just make it break. That feels better. Let's shorten it a bit more, see if it gets bad. That feels too fast to me. I liked it out here. That feels pretty good. Okay. And she goes, Jitsu wa koko. Text. Is that her going go? It's gonna get lost, I think. So let's just put this in. I'm gonna ignore that and put in. 
I plan to overlap these. There's the hard sub. We'll end it just before the hard sub comes on, like that. We've got hers. Now we need to get the detectives. Insert D for detective. And shift right click to snap it to the end of that other line. I can just enter to create a new line. Red text. Set this back to stock because it's a hard sub. If you shift while you drag these, they stay kind of snapped into a line, so I can just move it up without worrying about decentering it, like that, um, which is kind of cool. Again, I'll click in front of the text here, and I can just use my previous values. It's going to be well. Is it the same red? I don't know. It's the same red. Yep. And then the border color, same kind of gray. Notice there's a shadow on there. I typically go through and I actually do slash shad zero to get rid of it. Because I like it to match as perfectly as I can if it's matching on screen hard subs. You could probably make an argument for leaving shadows just for the sake of legibility. Uh, I'll leave it like this for now. I'm not going to fine tune any of the stuff too hard or match any of the effects too hard because we'll have lots of times in all the like fine tuning passes. <laughs> Let's end that hard sub. Here's me frame stepping back and forward again. I mean, I use it a lot. It's definitely. Ah, here we go. Okay, so I've set my out point to the currently active video frame. Where the hell is the end of my subtitle, right? Uh-huh. It's one frame back. This is where the sync between the video frames and the audio frames and then whatever the hell it is, age up, it, it misses. So now, unfortunately, you have to fix this. Um, you can go in and do this by changing the end time here by a bit. Just like that. So I've just added... I've incremented this by one, what is that? Seconds, tenths of a second, hundred, that'd be one hundredth of a second, excuse me, um, to make it line up. And now it's good. It disappears when it should. The other option, which I go to, even though it's a little bit slower, controls in to zoom in here, right click drag um, with this on the um, last frame, and then drag this to the right just until it shows up. There. And that gets it there too. Probably smarter just to use the box though. Again, middle click dragging to scrub my playhead. Is that close? Let's see. Yeah, I got it right. He goes chikaine, and then she goes chika, but it's so short, I'm not even gonna bother with her line. We kinda know what she's saying at this point anyway too. Like once you've subbed it three times, what, in the last couple seconds? So insert to make a new line, detective, chika. And we'll shift right click to end it there. Now that snaps to that end point that I set earlier manually, you would think, but I guess in this case, no. So again, it's not quite right. So we need to add to the end just enough to make it show up. Cool. Um, that's actually a decent amount. Uh, where did we start? Back here. Let's watch what we've done so far, shall we? It's good to do this. Make sure you're happy with how it's all come out. Konnichiwa. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't like it. I don't know why. I'm dragging that high out to this next line. Oh, it jumps out at me every time I watch it. I'm gonna, again, go with my heart. そんな人には見えないですね。どうなり見えたんだこの。いやいやいやいや。なかなかだって。なかなかの依頼だったので、こんな上品な、あら、そうですか。あ、よかったです。さようでございますという人が。こういう。ああ、はいはい。ああ、
でちゃんとあるんですねこのもう手洗うちゃんとあんじゃない<笑>あるんです水道が湯が出ないんですいやもうここでいいと思いますけどねそう言わずにトイレここで、はい、その言ってたその近いというベッドは実はここ<笑>近っ<笑>近っ近い人まだいる<笑>近いねそのいやそしてベッドはこんにちはどうも三千ドシノポイント And spending too much time getting it too perfect at the stage. If I go through here, and I, I mean, I could watch that 20 more times and refine and shit. And then as soon as you get the English, you realize all that's out the window anyway. So、uh, I'm gonna call that good enough for now.、Um, this is already going way longer than it probably should. So I'm gonna kill recording for a minute. And if I come up to a section that has something new and different and interesting, I will、um, start recording again and record examples of that. So cool. Let's see what we got. Uh, I just looked through, and actually, I have like 40 minutes of stuff recorded already. I don't know how much I can edit that down either, since it's all this kind of stream of consciousness style live thing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this here.、Uh, and if I find anything advanced and, and, and interesting and different,、um, I'll make another video because nobody wants to sit through fucking 40 minutes already. Jesus Christ.